Okay. I am uh, very happy to have this interview today with uh, a guy that I've, I've known for a couple of years um, through, uh, through Facebook or a connection uh, on, on, on Facebook. And uh, I'm with uh, Alessandro De Vecchio. He's a multi-instrumentalist, uh, multi uh, songwriter, producer, mixer, engineer, uh, singer, um, and um, uh, quite the animal rights activist as well. Uh, he's had uh, he had seven albums on the uh, um, still spinning top 25 of 2020 and a whole slew on the on the 2019 batch as well. So I'm very very excited about uh, talking with um, Alessandro today. So uh, first of all, welcome uh, and thanks for uh, uh, thanks for agreeing to talk to me. Well, thank you for inviting me and uh, yeah, I think it was too uh, after so many uh, chats and uh, and messages and comments and posts and going back and forth i'm very excited to talk to you finally and see your face yeah exactly finally. it's the physical the physical you know at least not physical but at least the virtual face-to-face -face connection is is always great yeah. yeah cool cool well let's just get right into it i have a bunch of questions i don't want to take too too much of your time um but i do have a couple of you know a bunch of questions here and and we'll, we'll go through them here as, as quickly as possible so we can get you on your way because i know you're like a super busy guy um Speaking of busy, you you have to be one of the most prolific writers and and, and musicians in, in in you know out there today. Um, how many songs would you say you write in a year? Because I ha I see so many great stuff from you um, that that actually comes out. But how many songs would you say you actually write in a year? Well, uh, I always divide my some writing into like two categories. Uh, one is songs that I write on my own and songs that I write with uh, other writers. Obviously, the second category is, you know, is the bigger one because, uh, uh, I mean, obviously there's different inputs and sometimes it's two people or it's three people, or four people, uh, and, uh, and maybe I just end up doing the top line or just doing the music or just, you know, uh, lyrics or right. parts of, of that. And, and that is an easier process because it's, it's faster on my end. And uh, if you send me a song, I can hum a, a top line instantly. So that's super oh, wow. easy. And, and lyrics, when that happens, are the easiest for me because I start, I start uh, humming melodies and I hear words in my head. So that's the easy process. And, and it happens. I mean, it uh, Sunstorm or Revolution Saints or, or uh, Hardline, you know, we normally work like that. I don't write all the songs, uh, also because I don't want to. I, I don't want. I don't want. Uh, you know, everything that's out there with my name, you know, to be me. I'm not a. Yeah. I'm not a me me guy. I'm more like a team worker. But obviously, I mean, there are situations like Edge of Forever, or, I mean, the the. The most important songs for you know big projects like Revolution Saints. It's not that I want to do it. It's more like I know what you know. I know the trademark. I know I built that, so yeah. I know what I want to hear from a Revolution Saints or an Edge of Forever song, uh, uh, Edge of Forever song, and uh, I I I, I kind of lean towards that more. Naturally, if I am, you know, the, the, you know, the build, uh, I, if it's me building the, the structure at the beginning, right. but, uh, I mean, last year it's been very prolific, probably the pandemic had a good turnout <laughs> because yeah. I delivered at frontiers, 147 songs. Wow. In a year. That's I never crazy. thought it could, it could have been possible, but at the end of the year we made the stats and I was like, Oh man. How could we do that? But I, I congratulate it with my team because we, it's not just me. I mean, songs on my own were probably uh, 25, 30. But songs that I wrote with Jeff Scott Soto, and I mean, that's another 11 songs on a record. So yeah. if, you, if you put up, you know, uh, at least 10 productions in a year on, on and, and, and most of the songs on those productions are mine. I mean, the number yeah. or mine or, or co-written with some of the artists or are the writers, the number easily can get there. Yeah. Well, that, that I mean, 
what you what you said uh, one of the things you said there around how instantly when you hear a piece of music you can you can sing the top line you can have that melody almost in your head already to me that's yeah. that's an unheard of skill um i, I know when i when i write um uh it's it's the melody for me the vocal melody is is the is the hardest to to do it's like um and the fact that you can you can get it off the top of your head you can you can see why people would want to work with you because you're you're you'd be able to come up with something killer very quickly right um well yeah i mean uh, it's um you know it's a uh, it's a muscle you got to develop and train during the years and uh and i i guess it comes uh it comes out of listening to a, a lot of different music i'm not just talk actually i never listen to to rock basically and you know when i when i i, I need some fresh yeah. air uh after so much rock during the day right that i'm you know going to americana to country to pop to uh dance to top 40 i i mean to me a good song is a good song and you never know you know what what melody could uh uh, bring you into a different universe because the way we, yeah. we hear melodies today it's different than we were used to to hear melodies in the 50s or 60s right so it's always good to hear what's around not because you don't want to be yourself because i guess i i will always tend to be you know the, the journey guy you know the ballad <laughs> guy the the hyper melodic guy but uh, i will never be you know like one of those fast lyrics, like thousand words in a, in a line. Yeah. I'm not the writer. I'm very smooth and very melodic. Uh, but, but I'm always open to hear what, what's happening around me because you never know where you can find, you know, influences and, uh, and, and inspiration. And, uh, and I'm a singer and, but I'm also, uh, a, a musician. So I'm used to, uh, to, to improvise a lot. I, I build my musicianship on on, uh, on improvisation. So it happens that, you know, what I do on the keyboard or, or on the guitar or bass is what I do with vocals. So if mm. you give me a, a, a chord section and uh, you ask me for a solo, I'll just look for the melody. I will never look for the, the lick itself. Right. I will always look for something that's, you know, that's got a story to tell, even if it's a solo. So that's what I do with vocals. Yeah. yeah, and and you know, I mean, it's interesting. You 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 know, and and you can tell it from from the uh, pretty much all the stuff that you're involved with. Melody is very very heavy in front and center, and certainly for me, a good song to me, regardless of the genre, is is all of, to me. It's all about melody, like the melody of the music, the melody of the vocal. Certainly, if you can interweave the mo the melodies between the the music and the and the vocal, so much the better. But but it, you know it has to be memorable. Like you have to walk away being able to hum that song in your head, right? Um, and certainly, I think you nail that. Um, and I think that I think that's interesting. Um, but with with the sheer volume of, of stuff that you that you do, um, and you're not just one genre guy too. I mean, I've heard I've heard harder edge stuff from you. I've heard softer edge stuff from you. I've heard more of the AOR kind of stuff from you. But what do you do to stay inspired? Like, in, like in, I know you were saying, like you know, you like you listen to a bunch of stuff because you never know when um, inspiration is going to hit. But with that much um, music, uh, that many lyrics, um, how do you stay inspired and to be able to tell you know different and, and unique stories? You know, every album, every every song. Well, uh, you know, I would I would like to answer just uh, simply saying, well, I live life, and uh, as a writer, I'm always. I mean, I have a, a, a different eye on reality. Uh, I, 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 I didn't, I, I wasn't born as a, as a lyricist. Uh, I, I, I never thought it was my strength until I understood what was, you know, the work of a lyricist. Because I was too much into, you know, with all respect to David Cordell and to White Snake yeah. and that kind of, of, of lyric writing. But it's very... It's very the same. It's all about love. It's all about broken hearts or the blues or you know yeah. slide it in. So right. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, it's amazing because writing hooks that are me memorable, like David Coverdale does, is a skill, and you got to be freaking good. Yeah. <laughs> but I wasn't that. I'm not that kind of guy. So I, I was trying to write something that was like 
you know, macho and uh, and very manly and, and like that and very bluesy. But I'm not that kind of guy. I'm more like, a, you know, I open the window to the world and I see what what's happening. I just tell a story. I'm more like a storyteller. I'm not. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, you know, the typical, probably not the typical rock and roller because probably because of my lifestyle. So I yeah. just, uh, you know, I made a strength out of something that I thought it wasn't strong enough for rock music. But then I, I looked, uh, outside of our own box or our own drawer genre. And I, and I discovered that all my favorite artists were telling stories, either, you know, the Beatles or genesis or i don't know queen there was always a story i mean the 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 lyrics were always from a starting point and then developing into a story into a into changes and everything was a circle and surely working with great lyricists helped like my first uh um uh view on on lyrics as a as a different matter was working with Mar- Marcel Jacob from uh, from Talisman. He was a great lyricist and great, and it was a great uh, ins- uh, inspiration also on looking for a cool hook, because you know lyrics are not just you know you tell a story and you know and you know the wall is white. It's yeah. not like that. <laughs> I mean, you've got to build the whole thing so that people can visualize what what you're talking about. So. And, uh, and then I said, when I started to work with uh, Johnny Gioeli from Hardline, and I saw the way he was writing lyrics, uh, especially when we were writing together, because I was at the beginning, I was sending like full songs, and it was like, well, I mean, I cannot change anything in the, in the lyrics. And I was like, it's impossible. I'm, I'm Italian. There must be something <laughs> that I got to prove, because it's not, it, it, it didn't used to be my mother language back then. Okay. But, but it was like, well, one one comment that I can make is these lyrics are probably too straight. There, there's there's not enough poetry behind it. So when we started to write like that, and I was like, okay, let me give you you know a white canvas and see what your lyrics would be on on this song. That's when the band also improved, and I realized, oh, well, I gotta. I gotta dig into something different within myself, so I just uh, you know started to talk about you know what I see. Cool. And uh, I'm a avid uh, uh, watcher of the world, of people, of uh, what happens. I always, I'm always, I'm outside of the world. Yeah. But looking in, I mean, I'm always trying to see what's happening, what people feel, what's the general. You know, uh, 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 not trend, but what's the general atmosphere in the world? Like right now, it all feels like you know we might uh, redeem from you know from all everything we've done for years, and maybe there's a there's a there's a new future right. for all of us. Yeah. So I, I mean, probably in the next months, I will channel that and write about it. Okay. Cool. Well, it'll be it'll be. Uh, um uh, a set of inspirational lyrics, I'm sure. Then, in terms of that that rebirth, of that new hope, that new that new yeah. that new way, yeah. right? So, for sure. Well, I know I I look I definitely look forward to that. And certainly, you you actually have a lot of uh, um, really cool uh, stuff coming out, just about to come out. Um, the new Sunstorm album, uh, which is amazing, awesome. Every song on that album is awesome, uh, start to finish. I get. So I guess you you already got the the link from uh, Frontiers. Yes, so yes, I yes okay. I did. <laughs> stellar, st- stellar album. Love it. Thank um, you. Obviously, you know you have the the Sun Bomb stuff that you wrote with uh, Tracy uh, Guns and and uh, Michael Sweet. Uh, that one is 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 exciting. You got the Robin McCauley uh, stuff coming out, uh, which is also stellar. Uh, Robin is such a such a strong vocalist. That one is yeah. that one's pretty killer. And then. Uh, um, I hear you have a new, a new uh, Edge of Forever album coming out, which is yeah. exciting, totally exciting um, for me because the the first um, or, or the last album, Native Soul, was uh, you know in the in the top uh, top twenty of, of 2019 for the Still Spinning list. So very 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 excited to see, to hear that one. Now in terms of the Sunstorm one, obviously there was there was some social media. Uh, storm, if you will, around the change in vocalists from 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 uh, f- uh, from Drill Lynn to to Ronnie. 
Um, what do you think that, that Ronnie brings to the band? Um, because I mean, like I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that album, as I just said, but, but what do you think that Ronnie brings to the band? Well, Ronnie, uh, you know, when you change, uh, you know, when you go from, you know, such an historical and very personal, unique voice and you shift to, you know, more of a newer voice in the genre, obviously, I mean, what, what you want is, you know, to bring uh, new elements and a new, fresh approach. And, uh, you know, and uh, in Sunstorm, we could have ended everything like three years ago. But we didn't see the point. I mean, after so many years and albums and work behind it, and especially after the success of, you know, this, the new Sunstorm, we already changed the pattern when uh, when Jolene asked me to, to work with, with him on Sunstorm because we went, from, you know, on an edgier, heavier version, still melodic, but more, you know, more rainbow, there's more, right. more mom's in, but still melodies, on great melodies on top, but more, you know, t- tougher edge on, yeah. uh, on, uh, on, uh, on the songs. And we were like, what can we do to still be on the market, make it, you know, new as, you know, as new as it can be, but still retaining that Sunstorm thing and turn a project into, into, you know, more, more of a band. So we went for Ronnie for, for basically for two reasons. First of all, he's, he's got a great set of pipes. He's yeah. an incredible singer. He's very professional and we're friends. So we were like, okay, that seems like a natural like a natural match, sure. but uh, but but first of all, I mean, the main reason was okay. Let's have a fresher voice, a more you know, like modern voice, and you know, and and a different attitude with with more I don't know, crit with more power, with more you know, with a different intention. And uh, and Ronnie basically came in. You know, I mean, nobody nobody recognizes Ronnie as a melodic singer, so or our bet was okay. Yeah. We have to we have to make melodic song, melodic songs so that Ronnie will still make Sunstorm Sunstorm sound like Sunstorm, but you know with a, an edgier twist. Right. So basically, I mean, his sound I, I think gave gave Sunstorm more you know a different punch and more like more like a kick ass uh, attitude. You know that's good for twenty twenty one. Yeah. Well, definitely, definitely killer. Um, and certainly, uh, I hope everybody gets a chance to listen to it. Uh, I think that album is definitely one that people people need to listen to and give it a chance. I know old, you know, there's some old Sunstorm people that are that 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 are that are that are annoyed that 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 Ronnie's in there. But man, you, you got to give it a chance because the the album is is killer all you know all the way through. Um, now, if we if we turn to to to, to uh, the uh, the Sunbomb album. Um, yeah. that must've been pretty cool to write with, uh, Tracy and, and Michael, uh, two, 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 you know, I would call legends within the, the you know, the hard rock industry, right? Um, killer. Um, I, I'm totally looking forward to that one. Um, the song I, the first song I heard is, 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 is pretty cool. Um, but what it was like to work with those guys? Well, you know, I wasn't supposed to, I, I was put in the picture by, by, uh, basically Michael. So uh, we, uh, they were writing the songs and uh, uh, I think they just wanted, you know, some kind of a pressure approach on the songs and maybe they, they said too, 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 too long on the songs. I, 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 I just remember one day uh, that Michael and Tracy and uh, Frontiers wrote me and they were like, well, you know, we're, we're about to, to hit the studio, but we, we don't think we have it yet. So what would you do to these songs? So I got these, you know, 11, 12 songs. And I was like, okay, so where do we start? And, uh, and they gave me like, a, you know, open, you know, op- I could do anything I wanted. Uh, they gave me no restrictions. They were wow. like, well, just what would you do to make these songs go to the next level? And, uh, you know, I started, you know, the first song I, I sent was, you know, very different. And I was like, I don't know, guys, I would do that. I would make it more melodic, more anthemic, more yeah. epic. 
and I would showcase that range that Michael has because you know, yeah. music heavy. Like, everybody wants to hear, you know, the super mega, you know, heavy metal, yeah. uh, high range that Michael has. It's so unique. Yeah. But you know, but but the striper is not doing that anymore. It turned into more of a darker, uh, heavier band yeah. compared to, to the old days. And I was like, well, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's it's always going to be, uh, you know, this album was a reference to the '70s, to the first '80s. And I was like, what? Well, you know, let's let's go 100% with that and more. So yeah. <laughs> I started to write super high and long notes and wailing melodies, and they were like, oh yeah, that's what we needed. Thank you. Can you can you do the other song? So basically. Uh, uh, I, I, I sent my ideas and I was like, but, you know, let's find a way to make it sound like, you know, the, the three, the four of us are right. working together. So yeah. then Michael took the songs uh, with my versions and then, you know, reworked some of the parts and lyrics so that it could sound more Michael sweet. And, uh, but it's been amazing and I'm looking forward to have the album out. Now they're, they're doing the videos for, for two songs. And, uh, but that was totally unexpected and, uh, and kind of an honor for, yeah. I mean, for some writer to be called by, I mean, two legends. And uh, I already worked with them in other occasions. I produced a, a live DVD by LA Guns and I'm supposed to do albums with Tracy and Michael. But to get the call from both of them was like, oh, well, that's that's, that's cool. That's so awesome. let's do it. And uh, you know, and I'm 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 not Christian, but uh, but funny enough, everybody that knows Revolution Saints knows that I can write Christian songs. So yeah. I, it was very natural <laughs> for me to to yeah. go to Michael and, and and be like, well, I mean, don't worry, I will. I'm sure that I can, you know, I can right. write something, you know, a little more apocalyptic but still you know with that uh you know you know with the bible uh matter and depth right in mind yeah and uh and i guess he liked it because i mean most that's of the awesome. lyrics are there, still there yeah that's awesome that's awesome you know you, you know it's funny i i didn't i didn't i i, I didn't think we were going to talk about this but 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 the, the revolution saints stuff is some of my favorite stuff out there um, I think it's absolutely stellar, but but one of the things that I, I didn't really put put it together is is that you know the whole the whole the whole Christian element in terms of the you know, to, you know like in terms of the lyrics, um, I never really saw it as as Christian so much as just a positive message, right? And I get yeah. that, and I get that a lot from from your like from your songs, right? And and, and, and you know and I you know. It, it, and without putting the Christian element on top of it, it's just a very, very positive, positive messages, positive albums, um, but a positive sound, right? Um, and, you know, I think that the positive things are are, are needed in the world today, especially. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, interesting comment there from you. Yeah, um, yeah, but I mean, what what I wanted to say is that Revolution Saints were never meant to be Christian. Yeah, you know, I mean, those lyrics are not are not Christian lyrics. Are songs about uh, you know spirituality, but but in a but in a more it's, it's a broad element. Yeah, because, for sure. Because I mean, you can be spiritual and and believer if you're you know if you believe in you know this, this band is is something that gives yeah. me hope and, and strength. Yeah. Well, that's fine. You know that's, that's right. uh, so my songs don't are never you know like only in one drawer. I just yeah. want to inspire people to. To have more strength, because because what I see in the world today, it seems like you know we're running out of breath in this endless race, you know, for for more more of this, more of that. It seems like we're always, you know, under attack yeah. from the world, and it, I know that it, I know how it feels to to be there and uh, feel like you're helpless. But uh, but music should you know should push us to a to a better reality to create a better world yeah. or at least that's my that's my mission i know that i that i'm making music because of that because i want to you know inject more energy into people's life i don't want to you know create a, a you know doomer version of the world i want right. a more enlightened and you know and 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 positive and bright yeah. future 
you know, thanks to my songs. Yeah, well, you def you can you can de you can definitely tell that in, in 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 all the stuff that you write. So you know, good on you for helping bring some positivity to the world for sure. Um, uh, I, I I read on uh, or I read or I heard uh, about the new uh, Edge of Forever um, album that you're working on. Uh, how's that album coming along? Is that uh, does that have a tentative uh, you know release date at this point? Yeah, we want to release the album before the end of the year. Uh, it also depends on uh, on the tours and stuff because we would like to you know release the album and <laughs> I don't want to say be sure to get on 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 the road. Yeah. But the plan would be you know to have the album out and uh, and uh, you know and maximize all the work that we've done during the years and get on the road. And that'd be stellar. Turn, yeah, turn the band into more of a you know, I, 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 you know, Edge of Forever is a band. It's not just a stu just studio cats that you know yeah. that were together. So, and and we miss that because we were about to start the tour on March 15th last year. <laughs> Europe was closed on March 9th. Yeah. So we were like, ah, we almost got a taste <laughs> of that. And yeah. I mean, we had two shows in December, and we were about to do the full tour from March. Uh, on uh, till till October November we had gigs so we were like okay we're gonna have the tour get back to the uh, in the studio and start another tour but it didn't work like that but uh, yeah but the album is coming out it's amazing and I'm uh, I'm super happy it's uh, it's uh, definitely more uh, it's got uh, a more like a Saturn uh, rock element more oh, to it okay. Uh, there's less Sweden and more, you know, more Southern rock, uh, cool. but it's still melodic. And yeah. uh, lyrically, I took the concept of native soul, and I, I think I brought it to a to a deeper level. It's even more positive. It's even more inspirational and aspirational. It and uh, basically, it's the story of you know of what happened to the world last year. But oh, you awesome. Know, through the lenses of Edge of Forever, so okay. there's a very native, deep, spiritual element, but but it's it talks about you know falling down and you know bringing everything, bringing yourself and everything around you up again and even even higher and even higher. So uh, it's uh, I'm very proud of it and uh, I'm very happy that the, you know the band contributed to songs. So it, oh, awesome. you really turned, cool. yeah. Really turned into into a definitely more of a. Uh, it's, it sounds even more personal. You know what what I want from Edge of Forever. I don't want any other band to sound like us because yeah. that's the reason why I'm not singing with you know everybody that's asking me to sing with. Right. Because I would I would take away with all the work that I do, you know, in the industry. Yeah. If I have another band uh, where I'm the lead singer, I'm taking away the the little place of, uh, you know, original and unique. Yeah, the stuff is completely you. To, yeah, to yeah. my band, and uh, you know, and, you know, if it's a keyboard part or it's backing vocals, it's mix, it's different. Yeah. But when it comes to vocals, I, you know, I, 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 probably it's because I have other skills, so I can, yeah. you know, make a living out of other uh, talents. Right. But, um, but I want Edge of Forever to be, you know, the only band with that sound so That's we you. we pushed you know even even more towards that direction cool well i'm i'm uh, totally stoked to uh you know to check that out when it comes uh for sure now one of the other things that one of the other projects that it's getting a a huge amount of amount of you know buzz and some anticipation out there is the uh the project a very cool project with uh, joel holkstra uh michael sweet and nathan james and yourself um uh, that is quite that's quite the lineup, um, to say the least. Um, uh, how did that? Is, so, how did that project come together? And um, does that does that project have a name yet, or are they are we still figuring that out? No, it still it still doesn't have a name. We're still you know you know sending emails, and we're like you know we're, we 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 still don't have it. Yeah. But uh, we're, we're also you know we just started to write, so we're working on the material cool. right now, and uh, so we're still you know we're still you know, creating, crafting, you know, what, what the band is going to be. But it, I mean, it's, uh, well, it's pretty something for sure, because I mean, you have 
Michael, you have Joel, you have Tommy Aldrich, you've got Marco Mendoza and Nathan. And, oh, yeah. You know, and, oh, yeah, right. I forgot about Marco. How did I forget about Marco? Marco, I, Marco's an awesome guy, too. I met him a couple of times on the Dead Daisies tour there, uh, uh, you know, several years ago. What, a, what an awesome, awesome guy. He was so nice to my kids, too. So he's, he's a great guy to have around. Yeah, and surely one of the best players that we have in the world right now. So, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I felt... You know, uh, not overwhelmed, but when I got the the you know the communication that we wanted to do this yeah. uh, with uh, this this personnel, I was like, wow! I mean, the the <laughs> expectations are going to be so high that we got to kick ass and, and work hard. But you know, honestly, I don't. You know, I I'm very I'm very grateful that you know I can do this. I mean, with people that I mean. If you think about it, I mean, a band like that could, you know, could really turn into something that, you know, that's not just, you know, not just a project. It's, uh, you know, it's what the, the aim is to come out with, uh, you know, the strongest yeah. record that these five, six people can put together and become an entity, mm -hmm. become something that's, uh, you know, that's not just a super group, it's the band. Yeah. So it's something that we can bring on in the future, and uh, I mean, it's it's got all these you know all the elements to to be amazing. So we're yeah. you know we're we're writing, but there's a there's an excitement and uh, you know a feeling around it, and we're like, yeah, I mean, we really have something that's that's strong, right? That's amazing and and i know that everybody's like ah we're waiting you on the finish line yeah yeah that's... well everybody's everybody's just chomping at the bit to get at that one because just like you know world-class musicians top to bottom uh i can't even believe i forgot marco in that list but um he may be overshadowed a little bit because of because of because of joel and and uh and and michael and 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 probably unfairly so because you know as you say he's one of the one of the better better players on the planet without a doubt so um and and awesome you know and also an awesome guy like i said um so so when you write uh is there and you know, i know you play pretty much everything but when you when you go and write a song when you just like okay i'm gonna write a song today or whatever um, is there one like do you gravitate toward one instrument over the other? Is it acoustic guitar? Is it is it electric? Is it piano? Is do you gravitate toward one thing over the other? Well, it depends. You know what uh, what what I hear in my head first. Uh, basically, the the main instruments uh, I start with are piano and electric guitar. Uh, piano if. Uh, if the song is going to be more like a ballad or I have a melody and I just put down chords that, that I will arrange later on. But, uh, you know, but for uh, riff-driven songs, you know, I just get my guitar and I start, you know, yeah. playing what I hear in my head. I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, I can sit down with an instrument and start playing. So it always, something always happens. I mean, if I, if I, Sit down on the piano. I'm not the guy, you know, writing the tune, uh, playing the tune that he knows how to play. Right. Even you yeah. know when you have those uh, pianos at airports or places <laughs> like that, I'm, don't sit down and you know play Let It Be because <laughs> I'm not, I'm not even that confident to go like, oh, you want to hear my song or you want to hear you know, how I can play Tchaikovsky? That's and I'm hilarious. like, you know, I'm, I'm not that confident like that. But I sit down and I can improvise out of any you know the instruments that i can play and uh so i sit down and uh you know if i'm you know i need a bluesy riff i just you know i just do something yeah and i just get and it comes it just comes out oh that's awesome that's cool um do, when you when you work in multiple genres like different genres right um uh do you uh do you draw on different inspirations um, or inspirational topics in order to get in the mindset to write something harder versus something more melodic, et cetera? Like, how does that work for you? Well, to me, uh, it's more, you know, to me, melody always wins, even when it's uh, heavier, uh, harder stuff. Uh, so, you know, obviously, I mean, if, if I'm doing uh, melodic metal or power metal, I'm, you know, obviously I'm, you know, it's a genre that I, that I know very well. So I just uh, put my head 
into you know into that that drawer. Yeah. I'm like okay, we the double bass. You know, we, I know the elements that we need. So I'm you know I'm going into into that direction. But uh, but basically, I mean the the process doesn't doesn't change. Yeah. And obviously, I I, I use the elements that are required just to you know. Just because I mean we we work in a business with labels, not record labels with was, you know yeah, labels yeah. genre. So I mean if it's Revolution Saints, it has to be melodic, hard rocks. So we you need guitar riffs, those kind of solos, and especially if I know who's gonna play and sing, I know where to go. So if it's a if it's a virtuoso, I'm gonna you know write something that can can you know. Uh, exploit that and take advantage of that but uh i mean if it's a more of a bluesy more you know melodic soloist or singer i just you know tend to write like that but uh I, yeah but in a day i can write a pop song a ballad and a fast speed metal song you know just jumping you know, from one yeah. genre to another and but my attitude is always the same i want i want the song to have a hook and uh, and great uh, lyrics, not in terms of you know the wave and the way they, they the dynamics, but also the rhythm of the words. And you know, to me, the the, the a song is also you know the title has to be cool, yeah. and the way the title is in the song has to be cool. Because sometimes you know you have a a great title and it's not in the right place in the song, but right. I, I, it has to be like the you know, the, the sing-along element right. song and everybody has to refer, you know, uh, to, to that specific yeah. line. Uh, and, uh, and I, and I tend to work like that for any genre. Mm. That's what I learned from working with different genres. Cause that element is there. I mean, yeah. it, it can be motorhead, uh, or it can be Sia or right. Lady Gaga the, the melodic and hooky element is always there. So I mean, if you, if you learn, and if you if you're able to kind of entangle that from from yeah. other genres, you'll see that I mean, the way you write is always the same. Yeah, you have a structure, you have a melody, and you have a guitar riff or a piano riff or you know that kind of 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 element. It's uh, it's common to all genre. And and. All genre. and and, and that 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 strikes me, you know, interesting uh, that that you should come at it that way because um, I, I had I had heard uh, you know, from another interview that that uh, when you were growing up, Queen was your favorite band, uh, yeah. and Queen didn't really have uh, a genre per se. I mean, everybody kind of saw them as as something, but if you listen to their albums, they have everything in there, right? And yeah. and uh, you know, it, 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 is that what drew you to Queen you know, when you were a kid? Well, uh, what 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 made me fall in love with Queen was this epic in your face element, no matter the genre, the attitude and the the confidence that they had in making music was always like there was never a shy moment on on their record. It was always like uh, very evident and strong, and you could tell any everything that was happening, no matter the, the high number of elements playing at right. the same time. And, uh, and I wish we, I mean, the, the music world would, uh, would, could be based on what Queen did. Yeah. I mean, that would be the best, the best solution because <laughs> there's no genre. Yeah. It can be, it can be, you know, uh, a, a, a rock song, a heavier song or a ballad or just keyboards and vocals and then a folk song and then a dance song or rap song. I mean, that would be amazing because that's what music is about. I mean, but, uh, fortunately and unfortunately it, I mean, it, we didn't grow into that, yeah. uh, as a, as a, as a culture and, uh, you know, the way we, you know, we, we need labels, we need, you know, yeah. some kind of separation because there's too much going on. I mean, we, we probably would get crazy. So, I mean, we need the rocker guy, we need the punk <laughs> guy. So it, I think <laughs> society works like that. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. needed that. But, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, but Queen, you know, the, the, what I loved about Queen 
is back then I couldn't realize because I was like, oh, this song is great. Well, this guy, all songs were great. But then I realized I was like, well, they did, I don't know, 10, 11 studio albums. And so, you know, around 100 and, and maybe 30, 40 songs out of their catalog out. Uh, and each song could be a different genre. Yeah. So, I mean, that freedom, that, uh, the confidence to go from, from you know, from from anything to, to something that's opposite. I mean, just keep it, just keep in a track. I mean, you skip a yeah. track, and you go from a word to another, and then to another one, and then. But still, they still sound like Queen because you got the the choirs, the backing vocals, the the whole thing is there. So to me, they are with the Beatles and few other bands. They're the best. Yeah, because they could do anything and still sound, you know, like the Beatles. You would yeah. get to a point in the song where there's always a reminder, a trademark, where like, well, this is us again, and uh, and to have that ability, I guess it's for very few, and still an imper- an inspiration for me today. I mean, I'm still I'm still looking at them like you know, uh, real gods. I mean, like. Yeah people from other from other planets i don't yeah. even know how you can do that <laughs> cool um yeah and and totally agree with you on that uh, and uh and 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 great insight into that um it, changing gears a little bit um what was the what was the first concert you ever went to uh it was santana oh santana cool back uh in uh 90 something 92 i guess okay 94 cool. 93 it was, uh, I guess, the last tour that he did with uh, Alex Leijerwood on vocals, yeah. and uh, all I remember was the the, the smell of marijuana. What's what's this onion smell? Yeah. And he was like, ah, they're just smoking something, and I was like, okay. <laughs> That's but uh, no, I, I, it was amazing because they played like three hours and a half was the brother i think it was the brothers tour uh they played three hours and a half and they yeah. jammed all the way yeah. i think they had something like 13 14 songs but the old old jams were yeah. like super extended and uh and but my father was a big santana fan oh, and cool. a big uh, 70s rock yeah. fan. so yeah i <laughs> i guess it was a great a great concert to be with him and my brother and that's awesome as a, and and i was like oh, I want to do this. I mean, I want to be in that position of yeah. stage and jamming like crazy and, uh, you know, and, uh, and basically do whatever you, you want. Cause I mean, also Santana was able to put together elements that nobody else did. Yeah. I mean, feel Santana, if you hear one note, it's still you, you, you know, you know it instantly, right? He has that, he's that signature sound that, that, that many of the greats have, right? For sure. Yeah. Now, now are you a t-shirt guy? Um, like if you go like you know back then, where'd you go and you did you get a Santana T-shirt as yeah. an example? Like did, yeah. you got so uh, so. What was your first uh, 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 band T-shirt that you ever got? Santana. Santana. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I thought that might have been it. I also wore uh, uh, an Ingrid Malmsteen T-shirt that I that I could get a, that I could wear all days, all night. Yeah. I love that T-shirt. I had a dream theater. <laughs> Hard, pull me under uh, T-shirt that I I, I, I loved, uh, but yeah, at high school I was very into heavy metal T-shirts. I had Mumstein, I had a uh, Santana, uh, uh, an Ozzy Osbourne one, and and two Dream Theater uh, T-shirts, and I could I just loved them. I, I, I probably still have them somewhere <laughs> That's in <awesome>. some closet. <laughs> That's awesome. That's fantastic. Um, uh, and, and you know, I have a couple couple of other final things here to touch on, but um, before I get to that, um, what what advice would you would you have for for bands that are just starting out, or or say they're about to do, you know they're they're in the process of recording their their album? Like what 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 kind of advice would you have about about the songs? Um, you know that that you could give to to any 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 such band. Well. Uh, uh... Well, that's it, it's always tough because to me there there must be a, a fun element uh, to making music, and my advice would always be, you know, first of all, have fun, and and love your band members, 
because that's going to reflect. And love and hate your band members. Challenge yourself, <laughs> but you know, still have fun. And uh, because that 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 glue that you have with the person, it's going to be unique. So that's the element that could uh, translate your music to a different level. And uh, in terms of more, I mean, the mere creation and uh, you know, the, just that sole act of writing and, and making it right. Uh, you know, sometimes, especially today, we, you know, we live in the world of, you know, do it yourself, which is great, but but not because yeah. uh, arts, music, and entertainment uh, can be amazing if you do it yourself. Because I mean, the gratitude and the great gratification that you can have by saying, oh, I produced my album, I wrote all the songs and I did that without confrontation can can lead you, I mean, to probably nowhere. So, I mean, get professional advice. I didn't, I didn't produce my albums till, uh, till my 30s because I didn't feel confident. And I was like, well, I mean, if the Beatles had a producer and they didn't yeah. produce I mean, their, their biggest albums themselves, it's because they needed to see somebody else do it and maybe incorporate that and yeah. learn the person and maybe use it. So I, I've been produced I, I, and, and I always worked and I tried to, to make music always with better musicians than, than myself. I was never, you know, I was never the, ah, I'm so good. I've yeah. never been that guy, never been the guy, oh, look at me, uh, you know, I'm the best in town. I knew back then that, that I was, you know, like the special kid because when, when, when I was 15, 16, I could, I was playing professionally with, uh, you know, more experienced musicians and they were looking for me. So I knew that I had something, but uh, I was never, I was never, you know, I, I didn't work only based on that. I knew that, you know, talents need to be trained. It, it's a muscle. And if you indulge into, you know, being, you know, the good, the good guy it doesn't yeah. work. I mean, you have to get, uh, uh, you got to send songs and somebody has to give you, you know, like, a, like an honest professional opinion. That's, that's not coming from your parents and it's not coming from your friends, but it's coming from professionals. So yeah. uh, be, I mean, refusal and, rejection is always a lesson to learn if you're hitting the right target obviously if it's you know the guy in the street you know you shouldn't care but if it's a professional yeah. uh, you should because you know uh, a producer especially has a different ear i mean they can hear their train their 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 their, their profession is to hear things that could work and make that very evident, visible, and heardable uh, to the world. And that translation is, it is the toughest. Because you can have the best song in the world, if it's not produced right, the message doesn't get clear out mm -hmm. there. I mean, and uh, and I, I know that, you know, we love the, you know, the unproduced records. We can love that because a good song is a good song. But, right. uh, but to, to cut through all these million bands and trillion records that we have now, you gotta you gotta make it right. And sometimes what you think is good and right for your band is could could not be the right solution. Right. And I've that. I've seen that. I mean, my career. Uh, I, I've been a professional for now twenty six years, twenty five years, but. It took off instantly, but it really took off in my 30s because I grew up into, you know, 15 years of, you know, trying to make it, but still getting that rejection. And still today, it's an element that I want to have. I mean, sometimes you think that a producer is on top of the chain and uh, nobody wants to argue with the producer, but... But it's not like that. I mean, confrontation, which I want to have on a daily basis. I mean, if I work with Jeff Wilson, uh, besides being grateful to work with, with such a great musician, mm -hmm. 
I want to have that confrontation and go like, well, you know, what can I learn from this mix that I'm doing? Because I'm not, I'm not going like, well, I mixed George Lynch and, and Jeff Wilson. <laughs> on I'm like, wow. I mean, I'm grateful for, for that. I, I want to get a step ahead of what happened. Right. In the process. And, uh, you know, and sometimes just to hear like, ah, I don't know, the, the snare doesn't sound, doesn't sound right to the song. And you have to learn and to navigate into that rejection, but still, you're still there. So it's not like, oh, you're fired. It's more like, okay, so what, what does that mean? Yeah. Because, I mean, sometimes confrontation doesn't have to be super specific. It's, you know, sometimes it can be... You know, a little veggie and, uh, right. and a little spare. And, uh, you know, and you learn out of that. And But the new kids, they don't like refusal. They don't like rejection yeah. because we're leaning towards a society and a culture where, you know, you got to, you know, you can't hurt anybody. But it's, <laughs> it's, not fair. it's not fair to the cause of arts because yeah. arts, I mean, all our, our heroes have been rejected somehow. You cannot grow into, you know, into acceptance. There's no, there's no, there's no stair to climb. Yeah. There's no better song to write. If, you know, everything you do oh, is amazing. It's amazing. I mean, you, you, you you're gonna be so famous because yeah. this is so. There's no, there's no growth. There's no lessening to that kind of advice. I want to hear like, ah, I don't know, Ale. The other, I mean, the other production was was better than this one. Can we make it better? Yeah. Because I yeah. want to see myself grow as a as a as an artist, as a professional, as a as a person too. Mm. I think I don't want to be you, you, the same answer. Yeah, I think that, I think that's an interesting comment because I think that I think that those comments transcend not just the music industry, but any any industry, like you know, any job you're in. If you take that if you take that attitude, accept that accept constructive criticism and. And new ways of looking at things that you 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 only get better in whatever industry that you know, that you're in. So I, I think that's I think that's yeah. valuable lesson that, that that can actually extend past the music industry. Yeah, and uh, and uh, another job and another work into this profession is to be able to get to people that can give you positive criticism, because obviously I mean the guy in the street going like, well I don't like what you do. Well thank you goodbye. Don't take it <laughs> if you don't like it. I mean there's no there's yeah. no no input yeah but if if you work to get people around you that could you know could be you know still loving you but still caring about you yeah and giving you advices on on how to grow and that's what what you know i'm i'm very grateful uh to having frontiers because you know some some people think i know we're like <laughs> tyrants you know like a, oh well you gotta use this producer you gotta use these songs it's not like that I mean, when I work with, you can name all of them. I'm always, I'm always open to make it together and to, and to, to be better. I mean, it's not just me. Yeah. I mean, I want to have that little friction that can give you, you know, more also excitement. I mean, uh, I, 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 I was talking about uh, Jeff Pearson and the snare sound, yeah. like the new the end machine which in my opinion is one of my best sounding albums because it's raw in your face, it's powerful. It wasn't like that. Yeah. The first mix that I did was 65% like that. But still we weren't there. And the only comment was like, oh, Ale, we love it. But the snare's not nasty enough. It's okay. not yeah. up there enough. And uh, and I was like, okay, let me get back to the, to the raw recordings. So I sent another mix. They were like, ah almost 1% more. Can we get to these other yeah. 4%? So that struggle, the first three, four mixes of that, that album, uh, and and my attitude to go like, well, I mean, first of all, I want the, the band to be happy, especially yeah. George Lynch, Jeff yeah. Wilson, Steve Brown, and, and Robert yeah. Mason, obviously. Yeah. But I want them to be happy, but I want to pride myself with, you know, combining my happiness, their happiness, making a gas album yeah so uh the end process was so 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 much better because of that little friction because my first reaction could have been like guys it sounds so good it yeah. sounded good but it wasn't 
uh, completely beneficial to the songs. And so to me, there's always a, a lesson to learn. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, you know, some, some, especially nowadays, some producers and mixing engineers, they take themselves so, so personally, like, yeah. oh, they're, they're the hero, heroes <laughs> of the production. I mean, you, you're serving songs, so yeah. if you don't have songs, we don't, we cannot talk about anything. Yeah. Else. But uh, I mean, especially nowadays, producers are like, you know, hey, well, you know, I, I make this song sound so good. Well, what about the songs? I mean, yeah. to me, there's no production that sounds good if there's no complete vision. So if you're serving the songs, yeah. Well, fine. So I, I mean, if if the if the whole uh, world would struggle a little bit more into rejection yeah. that would give you know, even more fire to to make things you know to a better level obviously you got to get you got to get to a point where people around you are giving you the right advices and that's another skill but it's required yeah. i mean imagine if if you know if steve jobs had you know somebody going like ah oh, i don't think that the touch screen is going to work in the world you should you shouldn't do it yeah i don't like it it's an idea that i don't like yeah and you can you get that 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 you know that attitude is, is destructive yeah but if you get somebody that's like wow that that could be something because you don't i mean with just a touch but maybe you should do this to make it uh, user yeah. friendly that's different yeah, still sure. i mean probably told you probably told you the same thing but from two different angles yeah and uh that's why I, I, I love to work in a team with uh, you know very talented people so that they can give you uh, advices and feedbacks that are grounded into what you're mm. doing. Well, it's not it de like, well, I definitely get the sense that in, in whatever 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 place you are in working with a band, either if it's your own or if it's with others when you're writing or whether you're mixing or producing is that you 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 uh you're one that is always trying to learn from something else always trying to get better what other people are doing and try and incorporate that which which i think is which i think is really cool and certainly you bring up the end machine um album um you know phase two is 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 coming out first song is stellar so and the first album was amazing so i'm looking forward to the to the new album the new one is even well. better uh, that's that's awesome. I think I think there'll be a lot of people that'll be very very eager to hear that. Um, I'm cognizant of our, our time here, um, Alessandro, but but I did want to touch on one thing. You know, and I know it's uh, uh, near and dear to your heart. Uh, I won't regurgitate the whole conversation you've you've had with others, but but I know you're a staunch uh, a vegan, uh, which is which is really cool. Um, uh, and I heard all the, the story about how how you how you came came to do that and your family members reaction and all that stuff and, and if, if people haven't heard that story just just google it on the internet and, and go go look i think uh, uh, mitch lafon has a great interview with with alessandro he talks all about that it's, it's 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 actually quite entertaining um and quite enlightening uh but but um I, what i was wondering is about some of your favorite foods um because i because i know for me when i i, I tried you know i, I was i was a uh, I did a pretty hardcore vegetarian period of about eight or nine months when I did that, and I found it hard day to day to 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 find things that would a fill me up or it was healthy for me. But but you know, and things that I really liked, I I miss certain things a lot, right? So, uh, but what some of your favorite foods? Like, what are some of your favorite vegan foods that you can share with with people? Ah, uh, okay, that's 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 a tough question because to me the the best food in the world is pizza. Yeah, that can me be too. <laughs> me, and that's that's the one thing that would be hard, like you know, yeah, like I being mean, vegan was just the cheese part. I mean, obviously, I mean, I I, I was an unhealthy vegan for years. I was obese, so I went through all the you know that that period. But then I learned, uh, uh, you know, thanks to a very you know positive mental attitude and sports and marathons and this and that. I learned how, how to feed myself in order to 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 feed my purpose. So, uh, but but vegan food can be. I mean, a, a pasta with tomato sauce so easy to make and still it's filling you. It's making you feel great. It's a, it's a great it's a, a company food that yeah. you can share with friends and pizza. Uh, you can have uh, uh, there's tons of 
vegan cheese and vegan uh, meat substitutes are out there, but yeah. you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to send out the message that you know you need fake meat to be vegan because I mean, vegan food can be anything. I mean, if mm-hmm. you, if you, if, I mean, just to realize that if you are eating meat every day, there's probably chicken, uh, turkey, pork, and beef. It's four ingredients. On a vegan diet, you can have hundreds of ingredients because yeah. you have grains, legumes, uh, 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 pasta. You have you can have so many things, and eggplants can can you can you can cook eggplants probably in 50, 50 ways, yeah. or zucchini, or broccoli, or or beans, and you can you know honestly nowadays, thanks to the internet and thanks to you know this this new era where healthy food and healthy choices towards the, the planet uh, on top of obviously I mean if you're vegan you're doing it for the, for the animals but yeah. uh, we're just one percent of the population and the right. other I mean another good portion of the population is caring about the planet and what you know the meat industry is doing yeah. to to the planet to animals sure. to us as yeah. individuals. Yeah. We know that that if you are on a heavy meat diet, you are probably gonna face a heart failure, heart disease, or something like that. So we're, you know, the the whole combination and this high number of lactose in, intolerance out there yeah. brought the market to have lots of vegan options. If you think Beyond Meat, Impossible Foods, yeah, uh, you know, future meatballs and future uh, meat and. Uh, there's so many, and uh, Dahlia, there's so many options. If yeah. you go to a, especially in North America, if you, if you, if you go anywhere, Costco or uh, anywhere, yeah. there's there entire alleys of vegan food. And if you learn, if you learn to balance, you know, the comfort food that we all want to have, like the burgers and stuff like that. And, uh, and not to say that the most common, uh, uh, company food and junk food is french fries french fries, yeah. and french fries are completely vegan that's so, right that's yeah, so load <laughs> me up with not, a, let's load me up with a plate of french fries and mushroom gravy french man and i'll be happy uh, diet <laughs> but still, i mean if you if you if you want to be part of you know those who don't harm animals and try not to be too uh too weighty too heavy on this planet yeah. It's very easy nowadays, but my and I'm, you know I'm a I'm on a sports routine right now. So pizza, I mean I want I, I'm not gonna have pizza for probably eight weeks, so it's gonna be tough. But my favorite food is pizza. But till yeah. last week I was on a different regime into my training. I could have one pizza a week. Okay. And pizza, I mean any you, you can make anybody happy with just with a slice of pizza. That's so, right, exactly. Uh, yeah. I always win. Pizza, pizza can bring the world together, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, pizza and hummus yes. are the, the the foods of peace. Yeah, because if indeed. You hummus, hummus to anyone, you're gonna love it. Yeah, and, and vegan. That's right. And uh, even with just tomato and nothing else, people are gonna love it. Yeah, and, indeed. Uh, I, I don't know if you, if you if you ever had marinara, which is just yeah. oh yeah, sauce for sure, garlic. Yeah. Most favorite in the world. Yeah, yeah. I would eat marinara every day. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, 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 uh, I'm right there with you, man. Maybe a little bit of basil with a little bit of Kalamata olives on top. Sweet. Count me in with that, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, one final thing um, I'll add on, and this is this is something I I, I saw uh, this morning when I got up that you posted, and you posted a quote, and it had something something to the effect of. Um, you, your emotional well-being is tied to your, your endurance or something to that effect and and sort of basically in, like the physical part of it you know you improve your physical part of it your endurance yeah, I think it was you related it to running I think but but essentially if I can paraphrase is that if you if you focus on your 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 health and your physical well-being that will help give you strength not only physically but also mentally to deal with challenges and be more hopeful and be more positive and all of that that thing but but I just wanted to get your comment on that because I thought that was that was an exciting um, like insightful little little post that you posted today 
yeah, um, yeah. That that quote comes from uh, John Joseph, who's a vegan uh, Iron Man and singer of the band Chromax. So it's, it's yeah. kind of a. It, it doesn't want to define himself as a guru, but uh, he totally changed my life with his book, uh, uh, PMA Effect, the PMA Effect, and uh, and also another book that's called uh, Meatis Perfusis. So it's okay, it's cool. Kind of, I'll check them out. Yeah, it's a, you know kind of a strong title nowadays, but it's yeah. a, it's a great book. But the PMA Effect is a is a real life changer uh, book and experience for me. So. Uh, yeah, uh, what I've seen on myself too, when uh, when you're able to align the body, the mind, the heart, and the spirit, and the soul, all together into one direction, you, you don't even realize your strength. Because, I mean, if you're, and I've been obese, I've been procrastinating, you know, for years, so I know how I know that feeling. I've been there. Yeah. So I'm not judging. I'm just saying, well, if you're overweight, you can't, you might pretend to be happy, but your body isn't. Yeah. I mean, our body is our temple. And uh, if you want to get to a, uh, to a very enlightened state of mind and you're eating McDonald's, and it's nothing against McDonald's. It's more... You know what your where your energy comes from mm-hmm. because our is our energy is our fuel. Right. Every everything we do, we do it because of water and food yeah. and air. So if we if we if we learn to get a, a a healthy habit with our home, our body, we will definitely be on a path to be happier if we align everything together. It's not it's nothing new agey. It's nothing you know, too spiritual. Yeah. It's more like if you, if you, even if you, if you run 1K, one kilometer, you get toxins out and in that moment, your body is in survival mode. It's not thinking about bullshit. Yeah. It's thinking about, you know, getting on action. And, and honestly, I mean, what I experienced running marathons, you get into a, uh, a meditation state. When you do sports, and you're all, you know, all one with yourself, you get to a deeper level of, of knowledge of yourself and running, you know, we were, we're designed to climb trees and run. That's what we were doing, you know, yeah. you know, you know at the beginning of, of our species. Right. So, I mean, that's what we, we, we're designed. We're designed to be out there, run and get some fresh air and get our heart pump and you know the blood running i mean it's it's vital yeah like, we can't be happy and be functional if we sit on a couch the whole day and i've been there i know how it feels it, it doesn't work yeah i mean a lot of people ask me well how can you do all those things i mean uh produce all these records and, and do these and write these songs and run marathons and train every day and do this and do that and be an animal activist yeah. And have the strength and uh, and focus to do everything. Well, it's uh, it just takes discipline, you know. I yeah. uh, it, uh, right now I'm doing a, a, a training that I never did in my life because I'm on a body transformation uh, training. Uh, simply because it's not because I want you know a sculptured body. It's more I want to get to that uh, to that place where my body is clean. Yeah. That's cool. Not affected in my choices and my actions by, you know, some kind of disease that I wasn't born to have. Mm. I, 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 I bought the disease with wrong habits. Yeah. Uh, you know, diabetes type two and uh, you know, and all this cholesterol. We could avoid all of that. You know, it's unfortunate that that we're we're not uh, taught to be active. We're passive. We're, yeah. Oh, you know, you got diabetes. Take a take a pill. Right. No, just avoid the food. Obviously, if you're born with diabetes, there's nothing that you can do about it. So right. It's not that case. It's yeah. all those diseases that we're we're bringing into our lives. And if you have diabetes, your choices won't be clean. That's won't right. Won't be 
you can't be focused because you can't enjoy yourself because you're, you're sick. Yeah. You know, uh, and especially in a, in a day and age, you know, we're, we're all sick. We're all sick because we're, we don't know what we're drinking. We don't know what we're breathing. Yeah. You know, freaking social media is poison and we're yeah. there every day. Our, our lives, our business is built around so much poison that sports just clean your mind and give you a, a cleaner vision. You know, it's, you know, we're, we're, the whole day for us is foggy because we've got emails and notifications yeah. and, uh, and pressure from society because you've got to be more, you've got to be the best, you've got to be that, you've got to be more beautiful, you've got to be more trained. Yeah. But I mean, when you, when you step out of that and you start running or you start lifting weights or playing tennis, any sport, you just detach from this, you know, this, these empty boxes we think we belong to. And sport, in my opinion, uh, and I've seen it all myself, sports and uh, and animals and responsibilities for some other beings are the the greatest antidepressive that you can find out there. Yeah. Because obviously, if you're uh, clinically depressed, that's a dysfunction and we're not talking about that, but if you're depressed because, I don't know, you don't like your job, well, going to a gym or going to the, 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 the field and, and run or run or simply run because that doesn't that doesn't yeah. require money. Yeah. Just choose. Yeah. And if you want, you can also, you can also run barefoot. So yeah. it doesn't require anything. Then just action will teach you a lesson. I mean, after you run sure. the first kilometer, Second kilometer, third kilometer, you will you will know a very simple feeling of accomplishment that uh, you know we're not we're not entitled to having this society of superhumans and yeah. super people and I mean if you if you look at social media they're, they're all perfect yeah there's no fear there's no there's no you know it, it's such a bully world we live in that we. We, we all think we're, we're, we're not good enough, but, you know, getting on the on the track and, and just run, you just run. Mm-hmm. It's so natural. It's so simple. It's so, and it's so good for your body, for your brain. Yeah. Right? I, and I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on a similar journey myself, um, you know, focusing on health and, and, and whatever. And, and for me, I know like the, my daily workouts are a key, a a key for me in terms of keeping that motivation, keeping that focus, keeping, keeping the, you know, the energy up where I can, I can do things long, you know, early in the morning, long, like, you know, late at night, I have that energy, have that positive attitude, you know, those kind of things. So I, I see it, I see it myself. So I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that you, that you brought that up and, and, you know, how that how that has uh, you know helped you and and in terms of your goals and 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 your journey and I, I I certainly think that the tie as you say the 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 like the physical mental and the spiritual all come together and and you know yeah there's certain things that you might be acting on it at once but certainly you know the journey towards those three things will help uh, you know will certainly will help any, you know um, um, anybody in their daily life be happier with themselves more and more, more you know, have more energy and a more positive attitude so. Um, I think that's I think that's I think that's a great a great spot to end on, uh, man. Uh, I think I'd like to thank you for your time. That was such a great, such a fun discussion, man. I hope we can do this again, sometime, and we can delve into other things. Uh, you know, a little bit more of the the you know the animal you know rights stuff. Uh, some tattoo, you know, talking about tattoos maybe. Uh, you know, stuff like that. So you know, thank you very much for the like for the time, and I I certainly look forward to doing it again. Yeah, you're welcome. And, uh, you know, anytime, uh, uh, you know, it's me thanking you because you're giving me uh, a chance to, to talk about my music first, but also about, you know, I'm not just music, you know, I want to inspire. For sure. As I can, I want to inspire, you know, people out there to be better, better persons through my music, through my arts, which is my strength, but also through, you know, my humble you know, humble uh, example of being, you know, not the best runner, but still running marathon. Yeah. Not you know, having the best body, but still training. Yeah. Uh, so, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity for me to, to, to dive into, you know, different angles of my personality because I'm out there. I mean, what I talk about is, is out there. Yeah. I'm not, 
it's not I'm not focused about myself, but uh, but I'm I'm very vocal about things that I that I that are you know fire for me that, yeah. that I'm very passionate about. So it's always a great opportunity, and and I promise we will do it again and awesome. you know change subjects for and, sure. Uh, we can fun again. talk about so other the, stuff. Uh, you know, there's there uh, you're 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 you know as I said off the top. Um, uh, super motivational guy to me. Like you're, 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 you're inspirational in, in, in many different ways, both from a music standpoint, but also as a, as a guy in the journey that you, that you're taking. And certainly, you know, I, I, I didn't know some of that stuff that we, we, we talked about today. And, and, and certainly I, I hope others that, that listen to the, you know, or, or watch this, uh, video will have the chance to, 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 to ingest that and, and, and to, to, to really appreciate, uh, you as a guy, not just the musician, uh, you know, the music guy, because I think you're really inspirational for many. So thanks again, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome.